Welcome back to another edition of the Wolverine.com in the trenches with Doug Skeen and Michigan's former all Big Ten offensive lineman Skeen, Michigan, Nebraska. And we're looking at some of the good and some of the bad. The first series, 1341 of the first, starts with a with a negative play for the left side of the line in the center. Tell us what happens here. This should have been an easy completion. Uh, unfortunately, quarterback Cade McNamara has to throw it quickly here. So Ballas is third and five, and if you watch Nebraska's defense shifts late. They bring what looked like a linebacker out to the stand-up defensive end position over our left tackle. So we have now four down linemen and two outside linebackers. When the ball is snapped, number 42 in red, who's over Hayes' left shoulder, bails out of there to chase after Corum. The problem begins with left guard and left tackle not being able to handle number 44 in red, who creases in between us, and it looks like no one knows who to block on that side of the ball because Keegan just sort of lets him go. Hayes is out of position, and we got a guy splitting us there. And then the problem gets compounded here at the bottom of the screen. We have a nose, tackle, end twist. So the guy that's over Vistardis and the guy that's in between the right guard and right tackle are going to move to their defensive left. And number two down here, the defensive end with his hand down, is going to loop around to the inside. And when he does so, Vistardis should be the one there waiting on him. But Vistardis, in his second move, his shoulders are toward the sideline. His shoulder pads, and you can see everything, he's facing the sideline. You cannot block twist games if your shoulders are facing the sideline it is over with because when number two flashes around the left shoulder it's too late for the to do anything about it and now we got two guys up in our quarterback's face and because of that he's got to get rid of the ball quick and we don't have the luxury of seeing an open receiver downfield like we should be for an easy first down and probably a whole lot more Okay, 743 of the first, and here's your freshman quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. And on a read zone, zone read here, when you've got the defensive end crashing, you've got to keep it. And that's exactly what McCarthy does. Makes a nice move upfield for a uh, first down gainer here. So the read man is number 44 here in a two-point stance at the end of the defensive line. When he follows Haskins here, crashes down inside, that is the keep signal for the quarterback 44 shoulders are turned what's interesting about this is Schoonmacher the tight end is coming this way avoids 44 to go downfield and find someone else to block I wonder if that's by design I'm sure it is and the rest of the offensive line is just blocked to your left everybody's zone block left that's an easy one but what's interesting and what makes this play go if you look at the open field blocking down here by our wide receivers and Schoonmacher and then the nifty running by our quarterback on the keep. He sneaks in here, and if we just get a little bit better blocking ballast, just a little bit better, probably get another seven, eight yards out of this. But this is still pretty good. But this is a highlight here for the young quarterback on a read zone. Simple crash, keep, keep read. Makes a nice run for a first down, and it's well blocked at the point of attack. And nice block knocked down there by A.J. Heading at wide receiver. Absolutely. So that I was going to say, the down blocking or the downfield blocking is pretty good. If we could just be like ten percent better, this thing goes for even more. Okay, play three at looks like about four thirty of the first, and this is a nice run, five yards or so for Blake Corum. But you watch this play develop, and you're thinking, man, this could have been a bigger gain if what one thing happens here, Skeen. So Ballas, this is we're gonna we're gonna down block Honingford and Hayes and Keegan, the left side's all going to block down, down lineman to backside linebacker. And this is a beautiful view of this sky cam thing. I could watch an entire football game from the sky cam and love every minute of it. We're going to pull the right guard. Zinter's going to go block this stand-up defensive end. And Eric All is going to pull around to come get this front side linebacker here, which I believe is number 42. So Zinter comes over. And this defensive end, number 13, is coached to do exactly what he does, which is submarine and cause a speed bump here. Just make it, make, make a pile. Eric All, if you watch this here, is a little too deep. 
and he's a little out of position on this front side linebacker here, number 42. Corum, because of the way All is approaching this block, Corum makes a cut to his right, and Eric All gets one little bump, and the front side linebacker falls off and makes the tackle for a 4-5 yard gain. That's not that bad. But if you watch this thing and you freeze it, if Eric All gets a tighter path to this front side linebacker, gets his eyeballs in his throat, gets his hands up in his shoulder pads, and gets a hold of them with his feet wide and blocks somebody, Blake Corum breaks this thing to the left because Honingford and our wide receiver at the top of the screen are trying to block their guys to the inside toward the hash. If Corum can break left, all he's got to do, Ballas, is make number six, that safety miss, and this is a 70-yard touchdown run. But instead, it's a five-yard gain. These are the little things that need to get better. So I see Eric All, he's got to adjust his path, and he's got to use those big, long, strong arms of his to lock on to guys instead of doing the chicken wing bump and fall off a block. He can be better than that, and I know he can because I've seen him do it. Anyway, Ballas, I wanted to point that out for people to see. Decent play, could have been a home run. Okay, play number four is the right play at the right time, and this is at 259 of the first, and watch the tight end leak out here, a little delay route. Tell us what's going on here, Skeen. So, so Ballas, it's third and ten, and you got five guys hanging around your line of scrimmage. This middle linebacker standing over the start is, is he going to come? Is he not going to come? You don't know but you have to take a pass set to assume he's going to. At the top of the screen, you're going to see the blitzer come off of Schoonmacher's left shoulder. Schoonmacher hangs in there as if he's going to block that, and then he escapes. That middle linebacker I just talked about who was standing over Vistardis, he's bailing out to take our number three receiver, which is the slot, to the inside of the hash at the top of your screen. That allows Schoonmacher to be home free, baby, this is the perfect play against the perfect blitz. And they run a little twist game in the middle of this thing, and our offensive line does a decent job keeping them off of our quarterback, so he has a clean view of this. So, again, earlier in the play in the game, we don't block a twist all that well. At the bottom of the screen, they're running a tackle end twist, and here Zinter and Stuber are blocking this thing rather well. The Stardust has got room to help because his linebacker bailed to the middle of the field. So we block this thing clean in the middle and the perfect blitz against the perfect route and play. And this is a big play and it's a good one. Play number five, 103 of the first quarter. This is, I think, the only sack of the game. And this is not on Cade McNamara. This is actually on the left side of the line here. Looks like your left guard, who struggled at times in pass pro this year, has an issue here. Tell us about it, Skeen. So, Ballas, this looks like the left tackle. When you watch this game, the average fan's going, oh, the left tackle got beat here. That is not what happened. The left guard here, Keegan, has got to protect the inside hip of his left tackle. You see this from the end zone copy, the sky cam, which is the best way to watch a football game. He's got a, Keegan's got a wide three technique. He's lined up in the gap between him and Hayes. You have to set that thing. You've got to pass set that a little bit wider. And when this play starts to develop, number 99 from Nebraska here gets into the gap and Keegan's shoulders turn to the sideline and we don't flatten him off. You cannot let number 99 get to the inside hip of your tackle when he does and he creases the two and number 99 is now got to the shoulder of Hayes. It's over. The play is over. You can't block it. This guy's going to get penetration because Keegan did not help his tackle here. And that's why this thing goes sideways. Keegan's got a flat. The, the way you defeat defensive line twists, the first guy that goes, in this case, number 99, you have to flatten him off and pass him off to the nearest line mate of where he's going. Keegan fails to do that. It makes our left tackle look really bad here. And it causes a sack. So this has got to be fixed, Ballas. It's got to be fixed going forward. We've been talking about this for three weeks. Twist games, this offensive line is okay at. They do a decent job sometimes. But sometimes stuff like this, we're still giving up pressure. And we're still giving up leakers. And in this case, the worst case happened where we give up a sack. The left guard's got to be better here. Play six. 
twelve nineteen of the second. And this is that same play we were talking about earlier where all didn't really get a good piece of the guy. Now Luke Schoonmacher gets a piece of this guy, but he's got a running start here, and you're hoping that he'd flatten him a little bit more, make a little bit better block. Uh, still, great run by Haskins here, first down run, because the rest of the offensive line is doing its job. With one exception here, Skeen, tell us there's a one unblocked guy there who – Looks to me like somebody should have had him. Well, so Ballas, we're gonna we're gonna pull the left guard to block the stand up defender at the end of line. And you're gonna take Schoonmacher around to block this front side linebacker here, number forty two. The entire right side of this offensive line of ours is gonna gap block, smash everything down inside, and they do so pretty doggone well. We got good movement. Honingford up there is washing it down inside. And Stuber is over there. Philly August washing it all down inside. They're doing a really nice job. Schoonmacher comes around in here and, and is a little too tall. Schoonmacher gets a nice punch on this guy, but I'm guessing he outweighs this linebacker by 20 pounds. He needs to be a little bit lower and a little more violence and absolutely swallow that front side linebacker alive when we got a little bit more room. Keegan comes over and hesitates a little bit before impact, but he does enough. On his kick block, as the left guard comes over here to kick block this defensive end, this stand-up defensive end. What's fascinating here is if you look back to the pre-snap, the backside linebacker here for Nebraska, no one touches him. Number 28. No one touches him, Ballas. There is no football play in America that is designed to run inside counter like this or power football where you don't block the backside linebacker. And in this case... I'm guessing it's either right tackle or right guard can't get up and get to him. But because the front side is blocked so well and scoop marker comes around and gets a pretty good piece of this linebacker, we still get five or six yards because of this, but that backside linebacker goes unblocked and actually even misses the tackle. The guy that makes a tackle here is Schoonmacher's linebacker. Schoonmacher is six foot five, 250 pounds. That linebacker should have been eaten alive by that tight end. Schoonmacher, decent, but could be better on this play, and it'll produce more yardage when we get better. Play seven, 13 seconds of the second quarter. This is the touchdown. I want you to watch Andrew Stuber here at right tackle. And then everybody's going to look at Eric All and say, hey, it looks like he missed a block. But this is play action here. If Cade McNamara keeps this, he's got two tight ends to throw to. Both are wide open. Yeah, no doubt. So the play action off of this play is instead of giving it to Haskins, he keeps it and he tosses this like you're playing catch with a five-year-old into the corner here with Schoonmacher. Or you can go into the flat with Eric Hall. Neither one of them are covered. And so that would have been a nice play design. But I like the way this one is scored, Ballas, because if you watch the right tackle, Andrew Stuber here takes a nice power gap stack with a step with his left foot and smashes this defensive lineman down inside. And because of that, Haskins sees the daylight over there. And because of the routes that, that I'm sorry, the route that Eric All is taking over here that causes number 44 to take a wider route off the edge, and he can't get to Haskins, and it's too late. Haskins is going to power through number 42 from Nebraska. But this, this gap, this area to power it in is created by the right tackle here, Stuber. And Filiaga doesn't get a whole lot of punch in the beginning, but he holds his ground and seals that defensive lineman off either. If he goes, so right, ta- right tackle and right guard are why this is an easy touchdown on the ground. Okay, play eight, and this is third quarter, about 8.01. And I want you to watch a football player in action here. You want to see some, a thing of beauty, watch Hassan Haskins here on this defensive end. Ryan Hayes is waiting for him, but he never gets there because watch what he does to crush him. Now, at the same time, you look at the right side of the line, not too stellar there, but man, look at this block by Hassan Haskins. Well, let's start with the good stuff here, Ballas. So when you're, when you got a defensive end or defensive ends that are firing off the edge and, and you want to help your offensive tackle out a little bit, you chip them. And this is what a chip block looks like. This is the Mike Hart effect on this running back group right here. Hassan Haskins comes over here to help his left tackle out and absolutely drops a bomb on this kid and cuts him in half. That is just straight-up cash money awesome. And, Hayes, if you're left tackle, 
you get a positive on that play, and you didn't even touch anybody. Mm-hmm. That's a great thing on the on the grade sheet too. And the good news is, and so protection is set left because Vistardis snaps the football and moves to his left. So you got three guys over there blocking two, but with Haskins coming in here, you're basically blocking one. And so it's beautiful over there on the left side. The right side over here, Barnhart is decent at right guard, and Stuber, who's having a really nice season at right tackle, gets a little caught with his nose way out over his toes, gets off balance, his feet stall, and number 95 just does a quick little jerk and pull move on him and gets around the edge to give a little color up in our quarterback's face. We make a nice completion here. McNamara throws a really nice ball. But this thing over on the left side here is a thing of beauty. That is straight up awesome. Okay, 11.30 the fourth, and Michigan's behind, and they get it back right away. I want you to watch the schoonmaker again here, schoonmaker, however you want to. He's got the key block here. Nice job on the perimeter by Dalen Baldwin. But just explain the, the design of this play here before Blake Corum takes us to the outside. It's nice to see him go outside the tackles here and then eat that corner cob of corn in the, uh, in the end zone there. Dallas, I got to tell you, I'm a little, I'm a little perplexed here because we don't block this near side defensive end number 44. We leave him unblocked. Normally, that would be the read man out of a quarterback read option set, right? But in order for that to happen, you would have Corum on the left side of your quarterback, not on the right side. So when the quarterback here, McNamara, puts the ball in the in Corum's belly as if to emulate a read option play. He should be looking at an unblocked defensive lineman, but the entire offensive line here, we're just playing box-out basketball on a football field here. We're jumping the gap, and you can see all of our offensive linemen have their butt cheeks turned to the sideline to seal them off to the sideline. We do not block number 44. Corum makes him miss. Hayes does a nice job here getting up to the front side linebacker and sealing him off, and Schoonmacher does an outstanding block here on number 31. And then at the bottom of the screen, Baldwin has got his guy nice and locked up in an, in an open field block. And number four, the safety from Nebraska runs himself out of position and doesn't touch a soul on this play. And Corum makes them all look silly. This is really simply blocked. But what I find interesting is we don't even block number 44, and we don't need to because Corum makes a miss anyway, and we walk into the end zone. Touchdown. Okay, 630 of the fourth, and this is – the Haskins play. Everybody's going to be talking about how he's leaping people, but I want you to watch Luke Schoonmacher here. Carson Barnhart does a really nice job. And then the downfield blocking, A.J. Henning, fantastic. So really nice, a lot of room to move here. they just fallen behind 29-26, and they get it back because of a huge play. So let's start at the point of attack here, Ballas. You're down blocking with the right side of your offensive line. So Stuber's going to down block to the defensive tackle over Filiaga. Filiaga is going to be looking for the backside linebacker, and both of those guys do their job and do it pretty well. We're going to pull the left guard here, Barnhart, to kick block the stand-up defensive end who's standing outside the right shoulder of our right tackle. You get to the inside armpit, and you kick him toward the sideline. Barnhart does a nice job there. And then we're following up in here with Schoonmacher coming for the front side linebacker. This is the critical block right here. Schoonmacher comes in, squares him up, gets his hands on him, and it's just enough. But what really springs this? Filiaga getting to this backside linebacker and getting sticky on him just long enough. That's all it takes. And we are off to the races. It's a nice job. And over on the left side here, Hayes has just got a backside cutoff. Down the field. If you can take your eyeballs off the incredible hurdle here by Haskins, which is awesome, you've got to watch Henning block. Henning starts his block back at the 35-yard line and is still blocking down at the 20-yard line at the end of the play. That's the kind of effort, Ballas, that will win you not just helmet stickers, but big games and, dare I say, championships. If you get that kind of effort, downfield blocking out of everybody, we're going to win some football games. That's outstanding here by Henning. 